since the dawn of time, as we know it, the island of Corfu has been a flower-bedecked fortress guarding the western Mediterranean and the approaches to Greece, sitting just a few miles from Corfu's fertile shores. Corfu's beauty and its strategic location, which commands the passage between the Ionian Sea and the Mediterranean from the Adriatic, has been coveted since time's dawning by peoples and nations. centuries, invasions have been frequent and bloody. Today, this ancient fortress, begun in the 16th century after an invasion by the Turks, is again invaded, this time by a peaceful army of professional musicians and amateur music lovers. This army comes armed with instruments which spread beauty. But like the invaders who preceded them with instruments of destruction, they come from many distant lands, Britain, Australia, the United States, and faraway Japan. Today, Corfu sits in sun sparkling beauty in harmony with itself and the world. It's a flowery jewel adrift on the Ionian Sea. Perhaps the poet Shelley had Corfu in mind when he wrote, An isle under Ionian skies, as beautiful as a wreck of paradise. It's the time of the second spring festival holiday. The performers are an international group of world-class performers, including the Lindsay Quartet from England. Violinist Alexandra Brusilovsky from Russia who now lives in Paris. Cellist, Ginya Yankovic, a Yugoslavian living in Germany. Japanese flautist, Shikanori Kudo, now living in France. And virtuoso violist, Toby Appel from New York. Patrons are famed violinist, Sir Yehudi Menuhin, and Crescento Sarlis, the mayor of Corfu. Artistic director is Alexandra Brusilovsky. Music lovers, many of them competent amateurs, are here to mingle with and enjoy the thrill of listening to chamber music by some of the most prestigious groups gathered here from around the world. It's a joyous juxtaposition of serious music and relaxed frivolity in the friendly atmosphere of Corfu. The musical invasion begins.
50,000 years ago, the first men arrived to enjoy Corfu's abundant game and fruit. Music takes on a special texture in the soft air of this Grecian isle, and particularly so in this ancient setting. Frederick von Schelling wrote in Philosophy of Art back in 1809 that architecture is frozen music. He would have appreciated being in the audience this night, as the music of Franz Schubert fills the concert hall of the fortress, which has watched over Corfu for so many centuries. In 1892, the Empress Elizabeth of Austria had a palace constructed on Corfu. She named it the Achilleon because of her obsession with the Greek hero Achilles. Today, the palace belongs to the musicians as they practice among its splendors. As they play, it would not be surprising if their minds retraced the endless footsteps through time. became the property of Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany. It's understandable that the Empress Elizabeth was enamored with Homer's epic, The Odyssey. The statues of the legendary Achilles, which she and Kaiser Wilhelm commissioned, look across the very island which, according to Homer, was the last stop of the fabled Ulysses as he struggled to return to his home in Greece after the Trojan War. So goes the story handed down through the mists of time. It was here on Corfu that Ulysses was shipwrecked and washed ashore. Here, Nausicaa, daughter of Corfu's king, Alcinous, found him. After nursing him back to health, she persuaded her father, the king, to provide him a boat with which he was able to return to his wife and family. His long odyssey finally over.
still appropriate today are the words of poet Andrew Lang, who a century and a half ago wrote, and through the music of the languid hours, they hear, like an ocean on a western beach, the surge and thunder of the Odyssey. The Achilleon is but one of the must-visit attractions on Corfu. Over the centuries, each of the invaders or protectors has left traces of their unique cultures. The Romans, the Turks, the French, the Austrians, the Germans, and in the case of our next musical stop, the British. Alexander Brusilovsky is one of the shining lights of this year's musical festival in Corfu. With him are Ksenia Yankovic, a Yugoslavian cellist who has studied with Rostopovich in Russia and appeared with many of the world's greatest orchestras. Famed flautist Shikanori Kudo was born in Japan, studied in France, and now performs with orchestras around the globe. То, чем мы занимаемся здесь, это было моей мечтой. То, что здесь мне удалось собрать музыкантов из разных стран мира, которые могут свободно приехать сюда, это было то, к чему я стремился. То, что может японский, скрипа... японский флейтист, который с нами, живущий в Париже, приехать на Корфу и играть музыку Бетховена, это вот как раз та самая идея искусства, которое не связана не с политикой, которая служит как раз лучшим, лучшим идеалом и лучшим устремлением. string quartet is considered one of the finest in the world. 
As quartet in residence at Manchester University in England, they are committed to building new audiences for chamber music. Here is Peter Cropper, first violinist with the Lindsay Quartet. <laughs>
The sea surrounding this lovely island has seen the passage of ships since man first began to explore distant horizons. Venetian traders passed this way. Roman galleys, Venetian triremes, ships of Napoleonic France, and British men of war. The bows of each have parted the sapphire blue waters of Corfu. Today, its lush shoreline is kissed by the gentle waves of the Ionian Sea. Too many people, to my mind, only want to play the right note, and, and they forget about the fact that we are actually expressing the greatest inner thoughts of these composers. It's also very important for us to play music from our own country. This year, we've played Benjamin Britten, and I should think it's the first time that this music has been played in Corfu. And it's important for us because it is music that we believe in deeply. It's music from our country. And it was the last piece that he wrote. And the last movement, I think, particularly, was very moving, even for a Greek audience who'd never heard his music before. The difference between having the other performers who have never played together, for them, there's an excitement that comes from playing with somebody they don't know. But for us, we've been playing together for more than 20 years. And so we have to keep this excitement all, all the time. And it comes from always looking inside the music so that we can discover afresh every time this music so that we feel excited and can, we can communicate that excitement to the other people listening to us. visit to Corfu today illustrates one of the many opportunities available to those who love good music in unforgettable settings. Each season, England's chamber music holidays and festivals prepare specialized tours during which music lovers can revel in the music of recognized master musicians. And amateurs can have the unique opportunity of listening to and learning from some of the world's most renowned musicians. Each is carefully designed by Vivian Pittendry to provide the ultimate mixture of sights and sounds, filling both the eyes and the ears with beauty never to be forgotten, people and places in perfect harmony. 
In recent years, similar opportunities have been offered in such intriguing spots as Moulin d'Anvay in France, in Esterhaza, Hungary, and in the gently rolling Florentine Hills south of Florence. Historic London has also hosted the groups. Most often, Alexander Brusilovsky is the artistic director of the many festivals. Other artists of worldwide status are selected to perform and conduct master classes. They have included the Tala Quartet, Jeremy Menuhin, pianist, cellist Mark Dobrinsky, and many others. Brusilovsky himself became assistant to Leonard Kogan after being graduated from the Moscow Conservatory. His teaching career includes an annual stint as celebrity teacher at the Yehudi Menuhin School in England. Several times each year, this organization brings together some of the world's finest musicians to play for and meet with gifted amateurs or just lovers of fine music who meet and play in the world's loveliest areas. It must sometimes be difficult for the members of the group to know what to do next. The beauties of the countryside constantly beckon. There are museums to be explored, fascinating restaurants to be enjoyed but there is also the incredible opportunity to learn from the master class musicians and to play with ad hoc musical groups of their fellow festival goers. The music of the church bells of Corfu ring out in a raucous counterpoint to the more sublime music of the musicians gathered here. Add to this the most common sound of our modern age, the whine of an arriving jet seen from the terrace of the Konani as the musicians prepare for another informal performance. The Hazelwood Trio is from Australia, but is right at home here having brought their music to countries around the world. Violinist Donald Hazelwood is concertmaster of the Sydney Symphony and frequently performs at home and abroad. Let's listen for a moment while the camera takes us on a short tour of the area.
sea, the land, the sun, the music, the friends. All are in perfect harmony here on Corfu. It has been an intense experience for the music lovers here as they listen to and sometimes help make the sounds that added to the already sublime harmony of Corfu. At the San Stefano, guests can enjoy both the music and the pool. Each of them, amateurs and professionals alike, suddenly understood the words of poet Arthur O'Shaughnessy, whose ode, written in the mid-1800s, goes like this. We are the music makers. We are the dreamers of dreams. Wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams. We are the movers and shakers of the world forever, it seems. <laughs> 